My name is Carla and I am a Filipina. I live in Sweden. This video I am going to make is about a testimony while I am on my bus. Yeah. Mm, by the way, I will start my testimony. I, live in, uh, I grew up in a Christian family. My father was a Catholic and my mother, grew up, uh, my mother is a member of a church called Church of God in Philippines. Uh, which is Iglesia Ni Cristo, and many and maybe many know that church already. Uh, well, it started like this: that uh, when I was eight, I've been I've been into um, child abuse, and I've met uh, many different uh, kind of characters of my parents. I've been beaten up by my mother, and uh, my mother did not like me. She rejected me when I was little. And this was the this was the fruit this was the the evidence about my eye which is in the left right. yeah I don't even know which right or left is but my left eye is blind so um, and uh, when I was eight I've been molested by my by a cousin and when I was um, uh, 12 or something I've been also molested by another cousin and uh, because of these things that happened to me since I was eight, I became numb. So I started not to care. And, and uh, I just, I, of course, I still follow my, my parents and obey them. But uh, I, I, have, I, have, I still have doubts about God. Even though I believe that, the, that Jesus is the Son of God and but there is not such faith when I was young, when I was so little, and when I was a child. It was not so important for me because what was important was if I would be accepted by my family, which is I did not receive from them. So when I was 10, I thought that I am a boy. So I dressed like a boy, I act like a boy, and even my character, I shaved my, my head. and. I I stayed in that situation still till I became I became uh, 12 I think 12 or four, 13 14 something I I act some something like I I act something strange I I act very strange like like uh, let's say I was a, I was a lesbian before but then after that um when I was I think when I was uh, uh, going to be 14, uh, there was a member of the Church of God who was working to build the church, uh, and uh, he enticed me, so I committed sexual relationship with him. But then afterwards, I thought that he, he liked me or things like that because uh, maybe it was just that I am waiting for confirmation that someone would like me, but it's not true. So it ended up that way, that he, he rejected me. And then when I was 15, I met a, I met a man. Uh, yeah, but before that, uh, I, started, I started drinking when I was 14. I started, to, I started smoking. And uh, when I became 15, I met a man. And he became my first love. I thought that... I thought that that everything would be fine so we fell in love with each other and we we had a good relationship but then one day he broke my heart he left me and never said goodbye to me he promised things which for me was a uh, was uh, was all I thought that all his promises were like they all sat in my memory and in my heart and we and when he left me he never said goodbye he just said we will have a break, a cool off. So I thought it was real that we will just cool off. But then a few months later, I saw him with another woman. And it was hurting for me. It was really breaking my heart. So I lived, see, till, and then when, so I lived in agony. And I hurt many people since he have, he have hurt me. I thought that I would take vengeance. And when I was uh, I, I will, when I will I think I was turning to 18 
And my father said, don't go, don't plan to travel because maybe something is going to happen to you. And I said, no, father, I, I want to go to the province. So I went to the province and in there, there was a man whom I've just met somewhere. I've met somewhere a uh, man and uh, uh, this man is a friend of my cousins. So we we sent messages to, to each other through the phone. And I trusted this man that he would drive me to my grandma and and also to meet him up. So I went in the province and then uh, uh, it was really a bad choice because um, he locked me up on March uh, 10 of 2003, I think, 2003, yeah. He locked me up and I stayed there and I f and then my my hope was really was really going off and I said to the, to God if you're true if you have a purpose of my life would you make it possible that I would escape from here and would you make it clear for me that that I have a purpose in this life and so uh, on May May 30 or something it, it was some somewhere in May in 2003 I I escaped the place and I thought that he forget maybe to lock the door so I so I uh, I, I escaped and it was really amazing because he always locked the door and he, he really abused me and beat me up and I thought I was gonna die by that by those moments but I believe that God really had saved me, but then I didn't have understanding of who God was and who God is. So after those, I, the hatred grew in me, you know, I became more numb and I felt like I'm a zombie. And um, maybe after six months, I was not talking to someone, I didn't even dare to talk to anyone and my family didn't even know about it except my father he knew what had happened to me and he was always careful about my emotions and he didn't want to talk about it and I don't want to talk about it and then I was still struggling with my with my child childhood memories my the childhood abuse from my mother the molested abuse from my cousins and the broken heart that I have had from my first love and I thought that maybe if I would marry someone, a foreigner, maybe everything would be alright. So I did. And my father said I, that he would not let me go outside of the country. So this man that I met on the internet traveled to Philippines just to see me. And when we met, um, uh, he was just drinking all the time in the whole month. And on that same month, I, I was pregnant. Uh, I, I was pregnant, so uh, my father said, I don't think that you would marry this man because this man is not good for you. But I said, but, 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 but father, I, I, I like this man. And, uh, and inside of me, there is no really love. I, I don't feel real love for this man, but there is just feelings for him I, I know that I have feelings for him but not real love or so and uh, so I go to I travel to Sweden he brought me here I didn't wanted to to come to Sweden and he promised me many things he said okay I will love you and I said do you believe in God yeah and he said yeah so I thought that I just hold on to those moments when he said that he believed in God and I thought that when a person believe in God everything will be better so I followed him and we went here to Sweden and in the first year of my stay in Sweden he was always drunk we got married in December in 2007 we got married and there was and it was the first winter that I experienced to be sent out naked because he got angry at me because uh, he thinks that I'm crazy because I miss my home country, my homeland, I miss my family, and I was always crying. And I locked myself on the memory that I had with my first love that I said, oh, he never said bad things to me, he, never, he always said kind words to me, and 
he always tells me he loves me, but this man that I got married to, he's not like that. And I expected to be treated the same way that my first love had treated me. So everything was not the same. And then, uh, and then a um, few years later, uh, we brought my son to Sweden. We brought our son to Sweden, yeah. And a um, few years later, I give birth to my second child. And things rolled, you know. And in 2010, uh, my uh, children... Uh, was to be baptized in the in the in the Swedish church, and I met a woman who invited me to Bible studies, and I followed her, though I was not really willingly to go to her in Bible studies. I still encouraged myself, and and it was good for me to meet them. And on that same time, <clears throat> I didn't also notice that noticed myself that I am struggling with depression and stress. And childhood tri- trauma and those things that had happened to me so um, they always predict or no no that was not the right word they always prophesied that things will be better for my for me and my family and my first husband but nothing really happened good everything got worse and and uh, in 2012 I became, no, in 2011, I became diagnosed. I became, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic syndrome and post-traumatic stress syndrome. And I've got stress and I've got trauma and I've got depression. And I just didn't want it to live. I just wanted to die. I just really totally want to give up. And, and I told I told God, I said, just take my life because I don't want to live. And I, all, I also commit, wanted to commit suicide. But so on those years, in 2011, I didn't want to eat. I stayed in bed. Everything for me was nothing. Everything for me was black and white. I don't want to see people. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to talk about me. I pretended sometimes to be, <clears throat> to be like everything was okay, but it's not. And... I managed not to talk to people about about me and about my problems and troubles. And then finally, um, in 2012, um, I went into with my I went to my psychologist. Yeah, we talk, we talk, and for many visits, and I've got medications because I've got insomnia. I couldn't sleep. Everything was so terrible. And I couldn't leave. I couldn't leave any longer. The the pressure, and that my 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 ex was so very bad to my family. He doesn't say good words to me. He doesn't say good words to to even to my father. So I became so depressed about it. And then one day, um, in 2012. I decided to tell him that I don't love him and that I forgive him and that yeah he got hurt but he accepted it and he said that maybe we could try so we tried for for one month but nothing really happened because when he promised the first week he cha- he, he, he I mean he returned to the same to the same character so uh I really totally gave up and the church tried to help me and nothing worked for me nothing worked and and uh, I thought and then on that and on that same year my one of my friends she she was my best friend she was but we're not friends anymore we're not best friends anymore because so and I've had I've had this girl and on her wedding day, I met a man, and on there, I thought that this man—I I can see that he really that this man liked me and got interested in me. So, I be, I told my my best friend then that um, this man liked me, and afterwards, I thought I could escape the temptation that I'm strong enough. But at the end, I fall into temptation, and many times it convicted me that it, that I am committing adultery, although. Although our my divorce was on process, 
and in my in my understanding that is that uh, my my psychologist said that you are your your divorce is on process so it doesn't matter who you like because uh, because uh, what matters is that if you are happy and that this man understands you so a little bit I I really thought that what I was doing was right and I couldn't wait so I didn't have patience also so I so I fall into temptation and I didn't tell that to my best friend that that I had a relationship and then one day my ex found my uh, found the picture on the internet with me and this man and he he asked me and I lied and I lied and then he called my best friend and said things that that maybe that she know then says that maybe maybe this man and that he said to my best friend that she was a liar and she absorbed all the things that that he said that that it comes from me and things got worse so it broke my relationship with her and it broke my relationship with him and it 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 gives it gave a pay it, i mean it gave total destruction to everyone that surrounded me so what happened to me was i decided to escape to go away so i went to philippines in 2013 and i've decided to meet up with my first love yeah so i went to him and i said that i release him i forgive him and he was so ashamed he never even want to look at me and then, um, and I said to him, I don't expect that he would say sorry anymore because I release him from all the promises he have said. And I forgave also the man who have raped me when I was 18. And I've also told my uh, my aunt, my father's sister, that her ch- that her child molested me, and I've told my father that that many that two of my cousins molested me. And um, it released me totally. It gave me a, g- a better freedom. Yeah, so it gave me a better freedom when I spoke to him. And then um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, so I was released from him already because of the forgiveness I've done. And, um, mm, but, and I've already forgi- forgiven my mom. And... Uh, I thought that I'm on the right way, and then suddenly, and then suddenly my, uh, uh, and then suddenly another guy, and he told me many things, and I believed, I believed in it simply. I thought that, I thought that this man is also single, as he have said that he was divorced from his uh, wife, and then, I mean, I went on sinning. Though, though I believed, because since in 2010, from that Bible studies, I've learned many things from the Lord, and, I, and the Lord really convicted me with many things, and He changed my life, because things really happened from to, from 2000. So I, I believe that He working in me slowly. He was working, and He was changing my character my lifestyle things that I am weak I am weak for he really changed me and I stopped cursing I stopped my character changed the, the way I dress changed my, my perspective in life changed and on that year um, I uh, yeah so in 2013 I've got this man and in the end I've noticed that my friends were trying to talk to me so and even my sister was trying to speak with me and she even didn't knew that she had a, a gift of uh, visions because she saw but she was afraid to tell me that that I was bleeding and it was true because my my heart was bleeding and my soul was and uh, I ended up the relationship with that man then and he was so very angry at me because 
I said to him, I saw the truth that you were not divorced from your wife. And he was so mad 